Hey everybody, and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast. And in today's forecast, we'll be talking about quite a strange weather pattern that's occurring across the United States that's continuing to bring a lot of heat and as well as very dry weather to a lot of the United States. But there is reason to believe that this will change as we go later into this month, and I'll show you why in this forecast. But let's begin with what's happening across the United States today, and we'll first begin with the East Coast and the southern plains where it continues to remain very active we've been watching a lot of rainfall stretching from the northeast back into parts of south texas and this weather pattern is actually going to continue for the next several days so the only little bit of rain that we're really seeing in the united states is primarily associated with this area that we actually had a cold front move through areas like texas there's a cold frontal boundary that is associated with a low pressure system one of the biggest things that we're noticing is this strong southerly wind that is continuing to pull moisture out of the gulf of Mexico. Mexico, which is leading to very beneficial rainfall, especially along the Gulf Coast, which is where we're also noticing a lot of cloud cover today. Another thing I want to point out is further off to the north, it is overall very dry, especially across the Midwest, and as well as much of the Ohio Valley. This entire region, there's very minimal cloud cover today, and that's going to stay that way for the next several days. We're really not going to see a whole lot of rainfall across anywhere in the Midwest, Ohio Valley, or Central, or Northern Plains. So a lot of areas are going to stay dry, most likely through early to mid next week but again there's reason to believe that things will change as we go into late next week and as well as we get closer to Thanksgiving. Now back over on the west coast really also not very active here. We've had atmospheric rivers ongoing in the Pacific Ocean for several days if not even a few weeks now and overall we are still seeing a little bit of activity in the Pacific Northwest with maybe a few passing showers but overall the main activity when we were seeing that significant flooding back a few days ago that's kind of winding down now. We're really not looking at any threat that significant which is good news because we saw upwards of six to eight inches of rain in parts of Washington, Oregon, and even Northern California. So that is beginning to wind down now. All right, let's talk more about the temperatures across the United States, because as you know, or at least most of you probably know, there was a strong cold front that went through much of the United States. The only exception would be basically Florida, maybe Southern Georgia as well. It, you might not know if you're down in those areas because it continues to stay warm and as well as very humid. Back down in Florida this afternoon, upwards of the low to mid 80s in some spots, got near 90 in parts of Florida today, which is very rare for mid to late November. Obviously, we're getting pretty close to mid-November now. Pretty rare stuff there overall. Overall, though, again, the cold fronts move through many areas. The dividing line very clear there. 70s and 80s versus 50s and 60s this afternoon for high temperatures. Now, as we go throughout the next several days, things are going to change a bit. Florida's not really going to get much of this cold front. It's going to stay pretty warm there over this weekend. We're still talking about 80s for most of Florida. Only exception will be northern Florida, where some areas will only be in the 60s for high temperatures. So, Again, if you're down like Miami, no relief there. If you're over in, I don't know, like Tallahassee, you're going to see some relief, maybe some 60s and 70s for high temperatures. Nothing in terms of freezing temperatures by any means. But as we go into next week, things are going to change. We're going to actually see the potential for record-breaking heat in some areas like the Midwest and as well as the Central Plains. Rare for this time of the year to see 60s almost in parts of the Midwest. Notice Chicago almost at 60 degrees as we go into Thursday afternoon, even in the mid-60s in parts of Ohio. So I'm going to leave that blooper in there, but that's Iowa, not Ohio. I don't know where I got that from. Um, as we go into Friday, again, temperatures are going to stay quite warm. We will likely get a pattern change as we go into late next week, if not closer to Thanksgiving. So some good news there in terms of a cool down. We might get a cold frontal boundary. This is Friday afternoon, for example. The European model showing 40s across much of the Midwest, which would be much cooler than what is currently in the forecast right now, at least for Thursday. Here are the temperature anomalies. This gives you an idea from above average to below normal temperatures. Right now across the United States, most areas are actually below normal. Not by much, though. I mean, we're talking and maybe a five degree difference in Fahrenheit back down in the southeast that's the really only, only exception right now many areas about 10 degrees above average now as we go into next week things are going to change pretty rapidly notice in parts of the Midwest and the northern plains some areas by Tuesday and as well as Wednesday will be as much as 10 to 20 degrees above normal even parts of Nebraska will be as much as 20 degrees above normal for that region going into Thursday will probably be our hottest day of the week upwards of 25 degrees above normal for Thursday around lunchtime. Again, that is really unprecedented for this time of the year. As we go into Friday, into Saturday, into Sunday, overall, we'll still be looking at above normal temperatures for much of the United States. Again, the temperature anomaly Sunday morning still indicating upwards of 10 to 20 degrees above normal for much of the country. But I do want to remind you, we are still about 10 days out almost from this date on the 19th. So keep that in mind. Again, there is definitely going to be some changes over the next several days. Will this happen? It's a little bit of an uncertainty point right now.
right now, but it does look more likely than not that we'll be looking at above normal temperatures by that point. All right, let's talk more about the weather pattern that'll be occurring across the United States over the next several days. And to look at that, we're going to look at the jet stream because I do think there'll be some big changes as we get closer to Thanksgiving and the jet stream will give us a bit of an idea of that. So as we go into Saturday and Sunday of this weekend, one thing we'll be watching for is a small little clipper system back over in the upper Midwest. I don't think this is going to be anything that significant, but we might get some flurries, some light snow, maybe some drizzle across areas like the upper Michigan Peninsula out of this, and I'll show you more on that in the future radar here in a second, but overall it's a very minimal disturbance. Notice how far lifted the jet stream is off to the north by Monday. The jet stream is going to be way up here to the north, and that is really far north for this time of the year. It's usually further down to the south, which gives us colder air, but overall, since this is so far off to the north, we'll be talking about warmer air for much of the country. One thing I want to point out though on Monday is that we are going to have a closed low that's going to be located just west of Texas by Monday morning. And as we go closer to Tuesday, this will actually move to the east toward the Gulf Coast, bringing beneficial rainfall to many areas along the Gulf Coast and as well as into the southeast by Wednesday. As we go closer to Thursday and to Friday, that low pressure system fizzles. By the time we get closer to Friday, we will have to watch two disturbances, not one, two. One of which by Friday morning will be located in the upper Midwest. That could bring some rain fall perhaps even some snowfall to some areas might bring a little bit of some snowfall in terms of actually measurable snowfall to parts of the midwest then we'll have to watch another storm by late friday and saturday that'll move across parts of the great plains this will move over the rocky mountains and eventually move into parts of the central and southern plains and this could be our next severe weather event if not it might just be a big rainmaker for parts of the southern and central plains and eventually toward the dixie alley that low pressure system in particular will definitely need to be watched. And we've seen this on the European Mall for the last several days, where it's showing some sort of big storm. This is what we would have to watch for across the United States. But again, we're still about eight to 10 days out. No reason to panic, but just keep this in mind. Again, we are in the second severe weather season and it's been very quiet so far, but I do think that's going to change as we get closer to the later half here of November. All right, here's the future radar. So again, over the next 24 to 48 hours, high pressure at the surface is going to dominate across the Northeast, Northern Plains, and much of the Great Plains, by the way. Notice there will be rainfall across the Gulf Coast and this will continue throughout the weekend and into next week. A little clipper system again in the upper Midwest that might bring a little bit of rainfall. I don't really foresee a a ton of snowfall if there were to be any up there but overall there would be a better chance of snow most likely at least in the northeast where there might be some flurries or light snow that might go to like the coating or something like that as we go into monday by tuesday again notice this low pressure system back down near the gulf coast a lot of rainfall could be falling in louisiana mississippi alabama and florida by the time we get to tuesday wednesday and thursday so some good news there but again the rest of the country fairly dry overall by the time we go to friday and to saturday this would be the next storm that we'd have to watch for would be back up here in the Midwest. This could actually be a winter storm. Thing is, that winter storm will probably stay north of the Midwest, meaning that really we will not see many impacts in the United States. It'd be more of an impact in parts of Canada. Heavy rainfall though possible in Michigan by the time we get closer to Friday and to Saturday. And then eventually as we go closer to Saturday and to Sunday, again we might get some sort of storm forming in the southern and central plains. That could bring some severe weather, heavy rain, that sort of thing. But again, it's still about seven, eight, nine days out from now. So stay tuned. We'll keep you posted with the latest details on all of this as we get closer. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe if you're not already.